Hey guys, one clue here. I hope all of you are doing really well. In today's episode of BitX 101, do we want to take a look on how you can actually debug your BitX device using a USB cable and a BitX, obviously. So let's get started and right into it. As you can see, we are back again in Visual Studio Code. You can use whatever IDE you prefer. What I do assume is that you have watched one of the previous episodes of BitX 101 and that you do understand of how to use the ESP IDF and this plugin to use the ESP IDF terminal. What we want to do today is we want to use a USB cable and a BitX device here in order to plug in this USB cable and then use the ESP IDF to take a look on what's going on on the lock side and actually maybe finding out any issues and later on I will show you a screenshot of something that might be an indicator for you to actually understand what kind of device or what kind of chip on your board might be faulty or is causing any issues. Without further ado, let's plug the BitX in. So we just, uh, yeah, simply take the USB cable and plug it in. And uh, for the record, I do have the version BitX Ultra 204 here with me. This also works with the BitX, with every other BitX as well, as long as you do have a USB port. What we need to do now is we go into Visual Studio Code and we open up the ESP IDF terminal. What we want to type in here is IDF.py monitor. Usually it should look up itself for the correct COM port as soon as you plug it in into your PC. It should be recognized by your PC. If you do have any issues finding the COM port, maybe click on COM down below here. Let's see if it opens up something. Yeah, probably COM16 is it in my case. And then it can establish a communication where you are with your ESP on the BitX device. So on the code side, we don't need to do anything. We just need to open up this terminal and type in idf.py monitor. If you press enter, it will now try to connect to it. And uh, I haven't specified any COM port, therefore it's trying to look for COM4, doesn't work, trying to look for COM3 now, doesn't work as well. And as soon as it hits COM16, it will actually make a connection with the BitX device. So let's wait for this really quickly here. As you do see, there we go. This is the boot up initial sequence. And I will let this run for a couple of seconds and then we will stop the monitoring and then we will take a look on what's going on in the logs and what you can read from that. Especially really important for you is to understand of what you really want to see in the logs and what you don't want to see. And by the way, leave me a comment down below. What do you think about my new intro? I hope you like it. And by the way, don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel so that I do know you enjoy this content and I will produce more of that. Without further ado, uh, let's stop the sequence here of monitoring which can be done by control t control x and now it should be done all right let's increase the terminal size here and let's scroll all the way up to the very top so what can we see actually in here let me actually increase it a little bit so that we can read it better it actually shows us the esp idf version that was used for the bootloader which is fine now everything starts to happen. Yeah, that's usual stuff. Boot up sequence here. So that's unimportant. Here we go. There's the first welcome to the big X, hack the planet. That's lovely. It tells us the configuration for the ASIC frequency. We also see what kind of device we do have. And we it shows us the device model that has been found as well as the board version. It also shows us that we do have 1B1366 one one with 112 cores. That's perfect. And now here in, in this next sequence, it shows us that I2C is initialized and that an ASIC voltage will be set to 1.2 volts, which is good. Also here, we do see a little bit of uh, input from all the GPIOs, GPIO 12 in this example here. Here is the Wi-Fi starting. So that's what we're going over here. This is the usual stuff that you should expect to see. If anything happens before that, or you do see a crash or anything else, there might be something else really wrong. And I cannot repeat myself often enough. 
if you have sorted yourself a bitx and it does make a noisy sound this indicates that you do have some sort of a soldering issue so if you fire it up and it crashes all day long because somewhere you have missed soldered or you have soldered a bridge on your bitx device then this cannot be allocated in the logs but you can hear it as an example what can be what can be shown in the logs is if there is any ic on the bitx device faulty uh, for example the ds 4432 could be faulty uh, the i2c communication could be broken or anything like that and this is what we could see here in in the logs and that's what we're trying to see here and i will show you a screenshot later on of how this would look let's move on this is just wi-fi 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 perfect dhcp server um, my wi-fi connection all right and here here it goes now we do have a connection and we do see the IP address of the BitX itself. Uh, we see there is an initialization of the ASIC chip. And it also says it has detected one ASIC chip. So this is probably the first debug thing that you would figure out if you do have any issues with your BitX device and there is no ASIC connected to it or any solder issues to it, it would actually show you zero chips detected on the chain, expected one. So then it would actually stop here and not do anything else. Here's the frequency setting. We do get the pool, the stratum, we get uh, the connection of the IP that we're connecting to. And here it starts. This is the usual stuff that you actually expect to see in the logs and sure what we're trying to do here and why this video is different from the debug session using the web ui is this here is a direct communication with the bidx device let's say for example you do have some sort of an issue and your bidx device is rebooting all the time you wouldn't be able to see this in the web ui because it would restart all the time and it wouldn't show you all the locks because it's restarting and you can't pull quickly enough all the locks and that's what we're trying to achieve here using idf.py monitor to actually take a look on all the locks what this device is producing and figuring out what is wrong with it if if there's anything wrong i mean you could also just let this run here all day long and take a look on the logs this way instead of using the web ui whatever you prefer everything is fine so we see there is a stratum for the uid which is good we have a clean job clearing queues so nothing is in there and now it starts we get like the first id with mining subscribe with the parameters we get a mining configuration version rolling is enabled so that's all looking good we get a suggested difficulty from the pool which is set to a thousand uh, on the usual startup and then we get the authorization with the mining address and the password so here on this space we actually do see the the nonce that we should work on it also shows you the string and the length of it which is good it tells us okay this is version rolling so all of this is usual stuff you don't really want to take a look on that an important thing here to notice is we do have different things such as stratum api main task ASIC task, stratum task. So you do see it, there are different tasks running on this small BitX device. And depending on the task, you do get different locks. So for example, the stratum API is just for the communication with the pool. The stratum task is actually what's happening on the device. And then we do have a create job task. Now it's selling, okay, DQ to a specific job. And here we do have the stratum task again with a uh, identifier. This is all looking normal and usual. And all to this, you should be able to see this even if you do have issues with your ASIC device. Now comes the interesting part. Uh, we do see here is a create job task and it uh, dequeued a specific job. And after that, it goes into the ASIC task and it tells, okay, pool difficulty is that and here interesting thing bm1366 module this is also a task it tells us the job id the cause who is working on and what kind of version it's currently working on and uh, this is really good so this indicates okay they, there is some sort of a communication sending towards the asic chip and the asic result if you don't see asic results in your logs there is some sort of issue with the communication from the ASIC chip back to your ESP device. So in this example here, it actually shows us what it has done and uh, which kind of nonce it produced here and what kind of difficulty we reached with it. So very low on this end to 93.2 of 1000, which is pretty low. So with that one, you would never find a block. But nevertheless, 
this is a nonce that it produced and then it's going forward it's going to the next job it's trying it again and in this one here we actually surpassed the threshold of a thousand so we reached a thousand seven hundred fifty four and you can see that here it sends over a mining submit so this is basically all right i got an answer to the work you sent to me here is the response that's what's doing here. And then it cycles through all the time. So this is usual stuff that you should expect if your ASIC chip is behaving like it should. And everything else is just the same. Another interesting thing is down here, message uh, result accepted, which means this share has been accepted by the pool. Uh, here's uh, the same is over here. So yeah, this is just a information for you. All right, my share has been accepted. Now to something that is really bad. Let's hop over to an arrow that you could encounter, which is this one here. And let me quickly also increase this and then we go over what it is and what you can see from that. So this type of lock could be expected if you do have a faulty device. And what do we see here? We see an ESP error check failed, ESP error, there's some sort of timeout. All right, so this means something is staling, something's not working correct. Then it actually shows us where it does have issues. It tells us in the file main ds4432u.c, which is the code for the ds4432 unit, and it's trying to call the function as set, the set function, and its expression is to write to the reg register a specific byte. And interestingly here, it tells us a board was called at PCOX4. This doesn't matter what this exactly means, but what's going on here, it wasn't working. It was trying to write a byte to the register and it wasn't working on core zero. It tries to do that. The ESP32 does have two cores. Therefore, it also shows us which specific core was currently handling this task. And then backtrace basically means this is some sort of hex code, yada, 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 and ELF and line file, and it's aborting and rebooting. What this means, what's going on here? There is some sort of an issue with the DS4432U unit on the device. So this is a specific chip and it's not working. Some sort of a miscommunication is happening there. Maybe the device is just fried or it's broken or you do have soldered it and you didn't notice this, that there is some sort of a solder bridge between two legs for, for an example. This is what could happen here and the device actually shows us that. So if you do have any issue before reaching out and posting any pictures on X, oh, my BitX device is not working. Sure, you can do that, but be aware, you can do a little bit of due diligence on your own. You can use the logs as I showed to you and figure out what's going on. And then you can do the big move and go into the Discord and ask, hey guys, uh, I do have this specific error. It looks like the ES4432U does have some sort of an issue. It also could be that the EMC2101 does have any issues. So this is for the fan and the uh, temperature, that this does have some sort of an issue. And it would be shown here in the logs if there is a specific issue with that. Then you just use or copy this sort of issue, this error log that you do see, and then you can ask for help, like what's going on? And then probably someone will guide you through, all right, you need a soldering iron or you need a soldering station. Uh, this component can be purchased here. Just order yourself a new one, desolder the old one, solder on the, the new one, and then it should work again. This will be the most ideal one. Usually when there is some sort of an issue, like for example, you have plugged in 12 volts to your BitX device and now everything is just failing. I can guarantee you, you will not be able to repair your BitX device if you plugged in anything above 5 volts. But nevertheless, if there's anything else to your device and there are multiple errors, it is really hard to tell uh, what exactly is going on. You need to go over one by one from one error to another one. So and just for the record of actually knowing what the device DS4432U does, this is by the way, well, let me quickly grab my BitX here on the backside, the U10 component. 
it is located differently on the Ultra than on the Superano Super. It's up on top. Uh, UTAN is usually there for the communication with the display, with this I2C display. So therefore, there is some sort of an issue in this specific example here, where we have seen there is an error check with the DS4432U. I do hope today's video was a little bit informational for you. And if you do enjoy it, don't forget to subscribe and give me a thumbs up. I'd highly recommend and suggest you to do so. This actually shows me that you enjoy this content and that I will produce more like this. Also, I've enabled the membership on my YouTube channel. If you like or if you wish to, you could become a member of my channel for 99 cents per month. This will also help out this channel and will make it possible for me to produce more and way more frequent content for you. Thanks for watching and see you on the next time.